One of the nicest things about flying is that you sometimes get nice little gifts to take away with you from the plane. Take, for instance, this really attractive little light, bing, that I found in the seat in front of me. And also this down light, as I was putting the luggage in with unreasonable force, this just completely popped out the bulkhead. So I thought, that's quite nice. Now, uh, I was also looking for the little circuit board that makes a sort of bing noise. And the only thing I could find was down the side of the seat. Unfortunately, I don't think it was end to do that because when I unplugged it, one of the engines stopped and, well, you know, it was really embarrassing. I had to put it back in. Everybody was screaming and running about. It was just completely crazy. So unfortunately, I didn't get to keep that bit. I'd also like to say that I did uh, ask the air hostess if I could take these, um, although she did come back afterwards and shout at me quite a lot because apparently she thought I was talking about the in-flight magazine. But anyway, I've got them now. So what we've got here is a little light, it's an LED based light, and it's got a central terminal for the negative, and it's got two 28 volt supplies. One does the no smoking sign, and one of them does the fasten your seatbelt type sign. Now, I've already tested, by running the voltage up slowly, I can tell there's three LEDs inside, and that kind of fits with the fact that each side of the symbol has a sort of two yellow and one red in the middle. And that means that because it's 28 volts and it's running about 25 milliamps, that the power being dropped across the resistor is enormous. It's about half a watt per uh, LED per circuit. So let's say I take a look inside this. I'd like to show you this one going, but it glowed dimly when I connected to the power supply and then didn't light the next time. I may have nuked it, although I believe it may have been faulty in the first place. So let's take a look inside here. I see as a rivet at this side, I have a horrible suspicion that may be to stop people servicing it. So, yeah, I get the feeling that rivet's going to have to come out. Uh-oh. Out comes the rivet. Perfect. And what do we have? Okay, so we've got the 3mm lens superflux LEDs, and on the back are half-watt resistors. Yeah, it's simple. Not really much to say about that, is there? It's, I suppose ultimately 25 milliamps is well within the rating of these. These are rated about, generally about 50 milliamps or so uh, for sort of maximum sort of rating. I say maximum rating, you get higher power ones. But um, 50 milliamps is pretty typical for these because it's a fairly large package with the double legs for heat sinking. So yes, that's, a, that's an interesting start. So we know what's in that now. I'll tell you what, I'll light it up so you can see what it looks like lit up out the box. It's bright, a lot brighter. That's because this is trying to be one of those secret display type things where this is very, very dark plastic, dark grey. So it has to be bright behind that to make it light up. That's quite ferocious, actually, when it's out the, out its cover. So let's take a look inside this now. There's this ring that seems to adjust the tension of the swivel action. The tighter you put it, the much tighter it gets for the swiveling. I guess that is just for adjusting the tension of that. Two speed terminals on top, not really marked anything in particular. I did try a DC supply. I put it around one way and uh, it drew lots of current. I put it around the other way and it didn't draw much. Now I've just spotted the plus and minus symbols. Uh-oh, that probably means I've nuked it. So let's uh, try. Let's try that anyway. Let's give it 12 volts. It's drawing about 10 milliamps. Nah, not much happening. It's not glowing. I think it's dead. Okay. The first obvious things for opening this are that there are two screws on top. Let's take them out. Then perhaps this unscrews. I'm guessing for the fact that there's a sort of... Oh, no, it's not. I was th wondering if these are threaded through because that hole, uh, the wires just come through that hole. I wonder if they're then terminated onto these. I don't think this is considered a serviceable item. I think it's just basically uh, a, a disposable unit. Uh, I see some more screws down there. Unfortunately, they're Torx ones. So I think I'm going to have to grab a Torx screwdriver.
that's twice in a week I've had to crack out the Kamasa set. Let's see if I can get lucky with the size of screwdriver bit. So I'm going to cut those wires. That will just make it just that little bit more accessible. I think these are latched in. Yeah, I think they're pushed in until they latch. Let's just cut them. That's better. So is this going to fit? Um, I think it'd go up a size. Better. I can see a aluminium pin heatsink inside it. Oh, quite a nice heatsink. Oh, quite a nice optical assembly and an LED driver. That's quite interesting. And it smells hot and unhappy. I wonder if that's hot and unhappy since I put far too much current through it in the wrong polarity. And the polarity mark isn't very clear on it. I'm making excuses now, aren't I? So the LED lens, is it just clipped in or is it screwed in some way? It might be heat staked in. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. So that comes off and it's got the conformal pad there uh, with another little chip. This is kind of, it looks like it's either heat staked or it's just sort of like they've washed it over with a sort of a, oh there it's coming out, with lacquer. Fairly, uh, I was expecting a star LED. M Tech. E M T E Q. So initially I was thinking that this was just a standard current regulator chip, but I don't think it is because this is an inductor, which would suggest it does have um, the facility for regulating it down. But are these dimmable? I don't think these are dimmable. When they dip the lights in the cabin, they just turn off the main lights, don't they? And then you've got this at a fixed intensity. I don't know if it's adjustable or not. It's certainly only got two wires, unless that was being used for power and data, but uh, it just says ground and power here. Okay, I'm going to investigate this and see if I can find what some of these numbers are. Well, this is quite an unusual circuit. I can work out what part of it's for, but I'm not quite sure what this Darlington trans transistor over here is for. The diode had failed. It would actually blown a chunk out the side and I've replaced it with another diode in the correct orientation. And I noticed that when I was uh, playing about with this, the LED would come on at low intensity and it would flicker. And I've resolved that because I think it may have been the solder joints uh, underside, on the underside of the LED had actually failed. They'd cracked or fatigued with the just thermal expansion contraction of the LED over time. Either that or the LED itself has failed internally, but in a sort of that manner that if you apply pressure, it uh, operates again. But either way, soldering it has kind of alleviated the problem initially, and it runs about three watts. I'm not sure if that's the intended power output. I wondered if initially the uh, unit was designed to use this to detect a varying voltage on the incoming supply to actually switch the intensity, but uh, I, I don't know if it does that. It doesn't seem to be doing that anyway. And the way this, the main chip here, this generates, this chip over here is labelled CPRJ2672, and the closest to that I can find is an LM2672, which is a little switching voltage regulator. And it's notable that this design does not use sort of modern components like the uh, electronic LED drivers, the dedicated LED driver chips. I wonder if that's uh, just because it's an older design or if it's because the people designing it just based it on uh, existing technology they were comfortable with and readily available components, which would make sense. But uh, this uh, chip over here has a sense input and there's a voltage divider here. So by using that voltage divider to uh, give a sense voltage of 1.2 volts, you can set the voltage accurately. And that seems to be what they're doing. So that's based on this chip, this diode, this inductor, and I'm guessing this capacitor is associated with that. Then uh, the voltage is set at just under 4 volts. And then there's this 0.82 ohm resistor in series with it and the LED. And I'm guessing that is the main amount of circuitry being used to drive the LED. And that's it. Basically just a fixed voltage regulator and then a resistor in series. Really not sure what that is for. The power comes in, it goes through a small uh, inductor and then a second larger inductor and then some capacitors. 
I'm guessing that's just largely sort of a uh, noise filtering, possibly to stop noise going back onto the aircraft uh, wiring to in case it causes problems with interference with the radio systems. Very interesting circuit. Also a very expensive looking circuit because this circuit board, uh, quite hard to trace out because it's not single-sided, it's not double-sided, it's multi-layer. It seems quite complex in that respect. They've also, instead of using an aluminium core PCB, they've used the standard material, but they've put loads of plated through holes uh, from one side onto the other to couple onto the custom heat sink. And I think this is an alloy. It, it's got that aluminium sound to it. But this is completely custom for this task because those uh, recesses there are designed to take the uh, pillars of the uh, collimating lens. And you've also got this section here for the circuitry that protrudes on the underside, this bit here, the actual switching circuitry, and then a hole for the wires to go through. This would, would have been quite an expense component to make. The beam that comes out of this is not that pretty. Let me demonstrate the beam that comes out of this. It's a bit motley. Is this going to show you yet? Looks a bit messy, doesn't it? But then the next thing is a suitably graded uh, diffusion filter. And by the time it's gone through the diffusion filter, it solves that. Yeah, a lot of work in this. An awful lot of work. Very odd circuitry. Really quite intrigued to know what that's for now. I just uh, It's very hard to trace out, as I say, because the circuit board is uh, multi-layer. And uh, I just can't quite twig what it's doing. Odd. Very odd. But yeah, very neat. Uh, very interesting design. And it is kind of working now. That just leaves one last thing. I think uh, we need to disco this up a bit to make it look much better. Much more modern and disco-like. So uh, let's do that right now. Ah yes, that's better. The disco indicators. Perfect for all modern aircraft to give them that futuristic look as the LEDs just randomly change colours for added, completely pointless, dramatic effect. Actually looks quite nice. Looks very nice. It's swampy out in the camera a bit just because of the intensity of the displays. But yeah, that's uh, quite neat.